This is a high school here in Tampa, Florida. Can you explain what exactly we're looking at? Because we're looking at this building. There's no overhang here. There's an overhang over here. What you got going on? So my name is William Knight. I teach here at Middleton High School in Tampa, Florida. I teach high school building construction and my upper level classes, my twos, threes, and fours are involved in this project this year where we are building a high efficiency or what we're trying to accomplish is high efficiency passive home. And the way we're doing that is with a monopoly style frame and completely sealing our envelope and then adding on our eaves or our umbrella after the fact. They are functional in letting the rain screen and the cold roof breathe, but um, other than that, they're just uh, aesthetic. The envelope of the house will be completely sealed up with poly ISO insulation, as you can see, furred out for our rain screen, and uh, our siding will be added on top of that. So for people that don't know, the, the poly ISO that you're talking about, is that this over here? Yes, that's the poly ISO insulation. Each one of those is an R5, so we're doubling it up for right at two inches thick. So there's none on this side, right? Not, not, not yet. And then this side has it, it, correct? And then this side over here has it already. So this is what you're, so when you say doubling up, that's what yeah, you're we're speaking. Yeah, we're doing two sheets for a R10, and then we're doing R26 rock wool inside of the wall cavities inside of the house. Um, so that will give us an R36. We've done blower door testing. Um, to check our progress along the way and um, got some decent numbers for our first time. The kids were impressed. Um, it, it was nice to see the kids try to go back and fix some of the leaks. We did a smoke test and uh, hey man. tried to find where we were failing and make some corrections to get our numbers a little lower. We started out at like a, f a seven and we got our numbers down to, uh, I think, uh, 2.8 or something. And that 2.8, like you didn't have your crawl space finished? I mean, no, you have a lot of- the crawl space is all sealed off and everything. Okay. Yeah, that was with that. Um, okay. It is a conditioned crawl space, so it's insulated all the way down to our perimeter. Gotcha, so that's what we're talking about. So that that's, was sealed up for the most part, right? Yep. Okay, gotcha. And obviously this is a temporary structure just for high school kids to learn and train, so. Um, yes, it's not an actual house. It'll actually have four bathrooms and a kitchen inside for the kids to tear the bathrooms out every year, re-plumb, re-electric, you know, do all the tile work. Okay, so, so why don't you, can you explain, because this is not typical, right? So a lot of people might be seeing this for the first time. What do we got going on starting from, from down here, how this whole thing is sitting? So we poured a curb all the way around the perimeter and we ran our our framing for our, our floor system. And then underneath it, we put another stem wall in going all the way down to the wall. And we ran our zip sheathing all the way down. And then we used Pressico to seal it up all the way around the perimeter to keep us watertight and airtight around the perimeter. The way to access that underneath is through a hatch inside of a closet inside. Okay, which you haven't cut out yet. Yeah, so we can't really see yeah. some of the inner workings of this. What do you want to call this? Your two? Two sheets of poly ISO plus our three quarter inch furring strip. And then we will mount our siding on this. We're going with sheet siding because we're going to go with a board and batten siding. It'll go up to our eaves. Every 16 inches, we'll put a batten. And then we put this uh, ledger board on here because we're going to actually use a different siding on the lower half. Now, so explain this ledger board because this is just something you came up with, right? What exactly? It's just a piece of two by four that I cut at a 15 degree angle. It's going to just give us some runoff. I did a cut underneath to relief up underneath so any water will hit that and fall so it doesn't roll back under. Um, it just it was a separation point. I could have done it, probably should have done it in metal, but you know, there's certain things we do just for- For training and saving training money and all these different things. Saving money. So the separation, that. so this is gonna be that- the four This is gonna be hardy, four by eight sheets with battens. And then the underneath half, I'm actually gonna use the, um, a corrugated metal that is the cutoffs from our roof. Gotcha, now rain screen. So this rain screen down here is a Coroplast product. It's got a net on it. So any water that comes down in here behind the walls, any moisture will go through this screen and drain out. Um, and it also keeps bugs from coming 
up through because it does have a screen on it. And that's three quarter inch, same as your furring? Yes. Okay. And then your, what, how, I mean, you've got these. Yeah, we kind of overkill it with GRK screws into the studs. But you're going but, through some. But our siding, we're going through, you know, two inches of uh, poly ISO, our wall, and then our stud, our sheathing, and then our stud. So we, we put GRKs in them. We didn't have to, but we did. And then you built your eaves and, at the end there, huh? We your built socket. our eaves on the ground and then put them up into place. And then our furring for our ceiling, or I mean, our roof comes down on top of it and it ties into the eave also. So it's got some, some tension. Okay, yeah, you can see the furring from here. So then you can see there's examples of that right over here. Yeah, that's for the other side over there. So these are all constructed, ready to go up here. And I've, I have to tell you, man, for a high school kid, that is, those are some really good looking joints. I mean, oftentimes you see such bad work, but they, they did a nice job on that. If you've ever seen yeah, they, even adults do work, that's, they did a really nice it's job. It's definitely not perfect. There's some adjusting that needs to be done, but uh, you know, they're learning. Like I said, it, uh, if, we, if we ran around here, we could probably pick it apart, but for the most part, it's, and you uh, have uh, how many kids? What, 200 kids working on this? Uh, not quite. Uh, probably 100 kids working on this. Oh, because your upper levels. But you yeah. have how many do you have total? Like 100? I have 218 kids on my roster. <laughs> you have 218 kids. So oh. somehow this man manages 218 students and then gets a portion of them to build this. And so that's, back wall furred out. Geez. We'll have a deck coming off that with some, with some steps. We got our our ladder framing for our eave on the back, and we'll probably do a little overhang above the uh, door just to uh, keep weather off of you. But we'll wow. wrap the whole, we'll band the whole thing with the ledger, so the bottom little section will be uh, a separate siding just to give it a different look. So You can do that on like com composite, right, you said? Yep. So the roof, the walls, everything has two inches of poly ISO on it, and then it's totally sealed off, so it's a completely sealed envelope. So why is the door up so high? Just because that's going to be the deck, right? Well, that's the deck, but that's the, that's the height of the... That's the height of the floor, you're that's right. That's the height of the floor. Wow. That's pretty good for floods. I mean, not only do you have a crawl space right. accessibility, but I mean, here in Tampa, that, that's... They're lifting a house right over by my son's school, and it's not much... It's about five well, foot I off mean, the ground. Well, I mean, crawl you know? spaces, homes are typically this high off the ground. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So this is pretty typical. I mean, it's a... It's not a hard crawl, but it's not an easy crawl to go underneath there. You definitely can, you know, you got 18 to two foot, you know, so. And it's sealed up underneath also with plastic up the walls and everything. Yeah, you got to give your guys a lot of credit. I mean, if you're looking at all the tolerances of, of everything they did here, I mean, that's that's so nice and tight and, and clean. That's yeah, it's not bad. Uh, it looks great. It looks good. Wow. So we've got vaulted ceilings, obviously. Um, the loft area above the bathrooms is essentially just going to be storage. We'll put our ERV and our dehumidifier up there. Um, we're probably going to run a mini split just for cost efficiency and what have you. This is all going to be running on solar and rainwater collection for the bathrooms. So it's not going to be tied into the school power or water at all That's so awesome. so you could basically take this house if it had a well put this out in the middle of nowhere and run it off grid and you would be completely on yeah your, growing growing your own vegetables you're you're self-sustaining right yep there you go <laughs> not so, that you would but i'm just saying that's that's really cool but then we just you know just for shits and giggles we threw in some uh metal studs just to form some round or radius walls just to show the kids you know, some of the things you can do if you want to spend the extra time on it. So I showed them this and then we'll, uh, when we get into drywall, I'll show them how to, different ways to bend the drywall and stuff like that, the wet method and the scoring method. So, but then uh, you walk down the hallway and you've got four different bathrooms, one here, one here, and then one here and one here. Ceilings are a little lower. We dropped them a little bit just to get some more storage up in the attic. But um, we'll have the plumbing running underneath and the pop-up for each drain for each toilet and all of that. Other than that, every year they'll get to uh, 
replumb, retile, rerun power and everything into these bathrooms every year and uh, just to get to learn the different skill sets that are involved in remodeling or building bathrooms. So I'm seeing foam just everywhere. Did you guys, when you attach the... I mean, um, not attached, we went back just when we were leak sealing, just for an extra precaution, we foamed everything. Um, when we did our first blower door test was prior to windows, the only thing we had was doors. So, um, just trying to stay up on, on, on air sealing everything. That's really impressive, yeah, this is so, cool. This will be a closet for electrical, there will be, actually the hatch for the underneath is right here, those four holes right there are the corners of the hatch and it'll uh, lift up but we'll have uh, all of our electrical in here um, our batteries for our solar our inverter all that will be stored in this closet and running throughout and then the closet over there will actually be our plumbing closet we'll do a manifold on the wall and that manifold will feed all the bathrooms um, so each cold water and hot water will have its own shut off so if kids were working on the plumbing in one of those, um, they can shut off the water and work on it while the other ones will stay live. And this is like the fifth time around for William. So he's saying, saying all this, and it might seem like a pie in the sky, but the last sit panel house that these guys put up, they had Tesla batteries fully running, um, did it on your, your, your ambulance Correct. rig, your Correct. own home. So, I mean, this is something the high school kids will do. Um, it's just something for them to learn. It's not, I mean, it's not necessarily part of my curriculum. But I, I, I do enjoy the solar and that aspect of things and, and alternative energies and stuff like that. So I kind of sprinkle it into our curriculum so they can um, experience it and see with it, you know, and, and mess with it and get to appreciate it. Yeah, and the, the cool thing about William, if you know anything about him, anything that is intriguing, different, interesting, he'll get a little spark and a little idea and he'll pursue it. And it's funny because we... I had a house that flooded, took on three foot of water, and it's from 1965, and it had a curved wall. And then William, all he did is he said, he's like, oh, I'd like to build one of these sometime. And the next thing I know, he sends me a picture, he did these curved walls, and he's like, oh, I just wanted the kids to learn it. I'm like, no. I'm like, you, you saw it, and you take that, he gets that little idea, and he's like, I just want to do it once. And he always does something at least once, gets it out of his system, and most people Gotta try it once. Most people are not like him. I mean, that's just... He's a cool dude, always trying and not afraid to take on anything ever. Uh, I can't believe, so, you, so this, this idea of, of building this energy efficient home, right? It basically I mean, came over this past summer. I had recently just built a tiny house for my daughter in the backyard of our home here in Tampa. And it was prior to me learning and discovering a lot of these practices on building high efficiency and air sealed homes and stuff like that. I mean, I did your basic job on that. I wish I would have known what I know now when I did do that because I could have built such a better quality product. So a lot of this was just over the summer. I basically designed it, put it together and, you know, got the, got everything down on paper to where I could come in at the beginning of the school year and start this. So literally the second week of school, I started ordering materials and, and breaking ground and putting in pillars for our foundation and just, you know, going. And it's I hard. let them make their mistakes, you know. I mean, it, it not, by, by no means is this perfect, you know, but um, there's definitely a, a learning curve, you know, for these kids. So, yeah. Or you come back and you're like, hey, you guys, you hung that stud upside down and oh, you tell I, them. This is how you do it the right way, and this is how you do it the other way. And so that's the people are going on there. And notice all these are lined up correctly, and then these are mismatched. Yeah. One group I told it to, the other group I didn't. Well, you're doing awesome stuff here. This is so cool for uh, taking us inside and kind of seeing this and being able to see the outside. I just, I've never seen a building quite like this. And, uh, like I said, it's all about, you know, all your mechanicals are in a conditioned space. They're not in a 140-degree attic. You know, our attics here in Florida um, are, are truly saunas. They, you know, 140, 160 degrees up in an attic. Your mechanical equipment's all up there in that weather trying to put out 70 degree cool air and they struggle. So putting all your mechanical in a conditioned space allows that equipment to work a lot less, you know, hard. You know, I mean, it's, uh, it just, it, it cuts down on 
And it, it prolongs the life of it, too. And every HVAC guy wants to shake your hand, putting it in a conditioned space. Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> they want all houses like this. For sure. But like I said, it, uh, it's just something, something neat to learn and play with and, you know, teach the kids. And like I said, they learn a lot of skills. They learn how to, you know, do a lot of fun stuff. So this is, when, when he mentioned the blower door space, so this is where that retro track uh, blower fan sits on there and you got it down in real low. Um, that compared to a SIP panel, which is like the inside of a refrigerator. Do you know, I mean, those, those I mean, are- A SIP panel is just a pre-insulated structural engineered panel, you know. These are not insulated yet. We built them, on, you know, on site, you know. But, you know, for speed, the SIP panel is nice, you know. Um, what about efficiency? You think that sit panel would probably? I think they're probably still better, right? Um, it just depends on what the sit panel is insulated with. It depends on the R value of the sit panel. You know, if it's uh, polystyrene, you know, there's a lot of air in there and stuff like that. So I, I don't know what the you know thickness of polystyrene is. You know, if it's polyiso, it's you know more dense and a little bit better. Closed cell, open cell, you know, it just that all depends. So if this had rock wool and had drywall, which, you know, it would be even more sealed up and you would have probably even Correct. a better. The more we add, the more it's going to seal up and stuff like that. But I wanted to get my low. And a lot of builders only do their blower door test in the end. Yeah. You know, I wanted to get mine as low as possible, as early as possible, because if I wait to the end, I can't go back and fix those leaks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to do multiple blower door tests throughout the build just to keep up on everything. And as we start penetrate, you know, putting penetrations in walls and stuff like that, I'll do another blower door test, make sure that those are truly sealed. And how many square feet, feet is this? Uh, not much. It's only 16 by 32. Okay. And then this is going to be a porch out here, right? Yep. Just a covered porch. We'll build some stairs and everything. We'll do tracks decking out here. All of this will be a tongue and groove wood siding, and then the rest of it will be a painted hardy plank siding. Cool. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking your time to go through and, and uh, show us all this stuff. It's definitely unique. Not a lot of people out there taking care of all the little intricacies that your students are learning over here. Not a problem. We enjoyed it.